Hey guys, Proper English here. We recently got a new snapshot, 13W5A, and this is a bug fix snapshot, so of course there have been some changes made to comparators. Some bugs have been fixed, there are some bugs that haven't been fixed, and there are some strange behaviors. So we're going to take a look at all of that. We're also going to take a look at some anti-burnout logic gates to see how the comparators behave in a more practical situation because I think that'll give us some insight into the stability of the comparator block. So let's get started. The first thing to point out is that comparators now have a one tick delay. We can see that the comparator has the same delay as this one tick repeater over here. And when I set it up like this with a piece of redstone in between each comparator and each repeater, it works perfectly fine. We're getting the comparators having the same delay as this one tick repeater. But if I have the repeaters feeding into each other and the comparators feeding into each other, the comparators now have a different delay and they're faster than one tick. So that's an issue that is still around. Now let's see how the comparators respond to pulses as opposed to a steady input. I've set up a circuit with a comparator and a repeater each feeding into a delay line and we're going to see how the comparator responds to different length pulses. We're going to start with a one tick pulse, so when I flip this lever, the repeater receives the pulse but the comparator does not receive the one tick pulse. So this is something new, before comparators could respond to one tick pulses, now they don't. Let's see what happens with a two tick pulse. So I'll just extend the repeater delay, so we've got two ticks. And now we're seeing a two tick pulse go through the repeater, but we're only seeing a one tick pulse go through the comparator. And it looks like the first part of the pulse comes through, but the second tick gets lost. All right, so let's try one more situation. We'll set this to three ticks. And now the comparator behaves perfectly fine. It works the same way as the repeater. We're seeing the same delay and we're seeing a three tick pulse. And this is consistent. I've tested all of these a bunch of times. So there are some issues with comparators and receiving one and two tick pulses. One tick pulses don't work and part of the two tick pulse is lost. Now that we've checked out some delay issues and some pulse issues, let's take a look at how the comparator interacts with blocks. Previously, comparator delays varied based on whether or not there was a block behind or in front of the comparator, and each of these situations had a different delay. Fortunately, in the latest snapshot, this has been fixed, and when I turn this lever on, all of the repeaters turn on at the same time, and when I turn it off, they turn off at the same time. That's awesome. But what about practical uses for comparators? Well, I've set up some circuits, and we can take a look at how the comparators behave within those circuits. Recently, I developed a concept called anti-burnout. What that means is by building logic gates without torches that need to turn on and off, we can send data through these gates at a very high rate because we don't have to worry about torches burning out. And so I've been testing out this anti-burnout XOR gate that I actually built before I even came up with the concept. And I've noticed something sort of strange. So what we're going to do is we're going to send different inputs into the anti-burnout XOR gate at a rate of two ticks per input. We're using two ticks because right now, comparators do not respond to one tick pulses. And the first situation we're gonna check out will work perfectly, but when I make a small modification to the XOR gate, it's not gonna work. So let's check this out. I'll flip this lever. All right, so if you look at the top line, you can see that our first input is on in the top line, and then if you look at the bottom line, you can see it's off in the bottom line. And so because only one input is on, we're getting an output of on, it's an XOR gate. And our output is only one tick, that's that weird pulse issue that I showed you before. Now we move to our next input. We can see that in the top line it's on, and in the bottom line it's also on. And so because it's XOR, the output is off. If we move to the third input, we see that the top is off, the bottom is on, and then the middle, the output from the XOR, is on. And then our fourth input, you can't see anything because the top is off, the bottom is off, and then, of course, the output is off. And so that looks great. Oh, let's put that lever back. And I'm gonna make a small modification 
to this XOR gate. I'm gonna put a block right in here. And now, when I flip this lever, it's gonna be all messed up. And there we go, this is weird. I'm not sure what's going on, but putting in a block should not do that. So, clearly there are some issues and hopefully they'll get worked out because anti-burnout could be incredible. The final change that I wanna mention is that comparators no longer repeatedly update the blocks in front of them, so this guy doesn't work anymore, which is sad in the respect that we can't set up TNT spewers in a super compact fashion anymore. But fortunately, we can always hook up a fast clock, and it's better that the bug has been fixed. So that's everything I want to cover today. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.